When I left teaching in 1982, I became a uh, software designer at MEC. MEC was the Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium. And uh, they were probably responsible for more than half of the educational software produced uh, in the United States in the early years of computing. And we were one of the primary uh, software houses that did Apple software and I think probably one of the reasons why Apple became as popular as it was is because we were probably doing the software that drove schools to buy apples. So I have a few Apple related items and stories I want to share with you and let me just show you a little close up here of a few of the items and then we'll get started. Uh, you're probably wondering what I got an iPad here for, I'll explain that in a few minutes. Uh, Mech, that's where the Oregon Trail came from. It's probably one of our most famous programs. Uh, there's an early Apple manual. Um, Microsoft Adventure from oh, probably about 1980 from Microsoft. Uh, twisty Caves and XYZZY to move around. Uh, cassette tapes for programs early on from Apple. Someday I'm going to continue my collection of Apple stickers. There's a few of them. Here's a, I believe an Apple One program called Death Star. And a few other items I'll talk about in just a second. set up. Alright, I started at MEC, as I said, in 1982, and that fall at our annual MEC conference we had two keynote speakers. The first night we had a banquet and uh, Alan Kay from Atari was our speaker, and the next night a guy from California by the name of Steve Jobs was our speaker and uh, Steve gave about I guess it was about a 40 minute talk and I have most of it on tape which I'm glad I saved and uh, maybe I'll uh, just play a little excerpt of that right now let me uh, let me zoom in here Hopefully that will show up. But uh, Steve gave a talk that night. This is 1982. Uh, I believe it was like December 1st. And here's a little excerpt from his talk that night. Uh, our goal down the road is we want to put a computer in a book by the side of a book and sell it for $500. It's very, very powerful that anyone can learn how to use it in half an hour. And we can't do that today. Technically not possible. We have three options. One, we can uh, do nothing, which is unacceptable to us as a patient. Second, we can put a piece of garbage in a book, and our competitors will do that, so we don't need to. <laughs> the third thing we can do is we can architect that computer and put it in a bread box. And maybe we can't sell it for $500, but we can sell it for $5,000, most likely, to the office marketplace. Uh, the office marketplace is a giant and is absorbing product like crazy. And then we can put that computer uh, maybe in a shoebox a year or two later, and maybe sell it for less than that, and then get it into the book. And that is simply our strategy. It's very, very simple. That's what we're doing. Uh, we feel that... Okay, so there was a little excerpt. 1982 of uh, his vision and you know he talked about sell it for five hundred dollars size of a book and learn to use it in a half an hour and I think maybe back then he already had a clear vision of what the iPad would uh, would look like okay um, following the banquet that night uh, we had a get-together in our staff room for 
uh, Steve to talk to him a little bit. And I thought, well, he's going to be a famous guy someday. I better get his autograph. Now, if you know anything about Steve Jobs, he does not give his autograph out very, I did not very often. Uh, and I didn't have uh, anything handy to sign except I had this disc. I was part of the Mouse in the Maze contest and this was one of our discs and so he signed that for me and uh, I wised up though a couple years later John Scully was our keynote speaker and I brought an Apple sy system disc along and got John to sign that. Okay so after the banquet, I uh, was visiting with Steve Jobs, and I said, I'd sure like to find an Apple I that you talked about tonight. I didn't know the whole story till that night, and he assured me I'd never find one. So a guy with him gave me his card. His name was Michael Murray, who uh, was with Apple for many years thereafter. And Mike said, Get, get a hold of me when I get back to California and I'll put you in touch with someone that might be able to help you out. So, I, uh, I did get in contact with a guy in Indiana and I did get my Apple One. And uh, it was a neat one. Um, this particular Apple One, very early, oops, very early one, it uh, had the white ceramic 6502. It was actually serial numbered 01-0005. It was the fifth one assembled and it was sold by the bite shop. Uh, this, so this was one of the original batch Apple ones. And I had it for a number of years and then uh, our kids were getting a little older. Three of them. Hard to go anywhere in a car with just two seats. So we wanted a minivan with that third seat, and uh, we uh, actually sold this to a vice president at Apple to finance our new van. So my story is this. Uh, Waz and Jobs sold their van to finance the Apple One. We sold our Apple One to finance our van. But that wasn't the end of it. Uh, this was my first Apple. I actually found two more after that. When I had picked this one up in Indiana, I picked it up from a, a fellow who was very actively trying to support the Apple One, but without success. And he gave me some uh, some material and notes that he had on the Apple One. And this is this is one of my favorites. Uh, this was a letter that the guy got from uh, Apple, and. It's kind of interesting because it says, Joe, when we built and sold the Apple One, we were a company of two people working more or less out of a garage. Today, we employ 20 people, and most whom arrived after we began selling the Apple II. And that was from Mike Markula. So that was kind of a neat piece. That's just a Xerox copy. I also had... Uh, there was the original cover from the preliminary Apple manual and later on it became that. So I did manage to keep some Xerox copies of, of some of this early stuff. Well when I picked that Apple up in Indiana the guy told me about another one in Montana and I ended up making a deal to buy that one. Now this was really quite the system. It was in the original box, packing slip, um, cassette interface, basic tape, all the manuals. The guy hooked it up, used it once and decided it couldn't run his business with it, put it back in the box and sat on the shelf for years. Bought it from Frank Anderson. Here's a picture of Frank holding the computer in Great Falls, Montana. So after Frank uh, sold me that. Um, I got a hold of Waz and because I, I noticed there were differences between this Apple one and the other one that I had. So I 
I contacted Waz, actually called him and talked to him, and he says, well, send me the information and I'll get back to you. And there he is, Waz, CL9, Cloud9, Los Gatos. And he sent me back kind of a nice documented letter I sent him with all his notes. And I think it's kind of fun to see what he had to say about the early Apple Ones. Uh, the first board had a white 6502 and a dull finish, and the second one that Frank had, had was a shiny board with a black 6502. It turns out that the dull white one with white chip was the first run. Those are the ones that got sold to the uh, uh, bite shop. I asked him about the one that Frank bought, and he didn't even know that Frank had bought it from Jobs. Must have done it without telling me, he said. Um, they were not serial numbered by Apple, they were serial numbered by the bite shop. Okay. I also got from him, or in that original, in the box, the shipping label was from a place on Chris Drive, and the invoice was from Welsh Road. So I said, well, what's the difference, and why Stephen? Who's Stephen? Well, he said, that's Jobs, because he went by Stefan, so it wasn't Waz. And it turns out that Chris Drive, that was Steve Jobs' parents' house, and Welch Road was their answering service. How many Apple Ones were made? 200. How many sold? About 175. And the other 25 were given to employees. Uh, all right, there are a few more comments he had. It uh, tells about Ken Williams buying one for 15000 because his goes a loss in a fire. And uh, a few other comments here. So that's kind of interesting. Another neat piece was in that computer is there was a typed letter from Steve Jobs telling how to hook up the keyboard and the monitor. And it was on line notebook paper. I always was amazed by that. So that was my second uh, computer. That one incidentally I sold to a collector in California for 25000 who sold it on eBay for 50000 and eventually this computer sold at Christie's in London for 213000 I actually offered it jobs because I knew his had been stolen. He, he wrote back and told me he had never heard of one going for more than 10000 and that I was way north of reality. So, uh, I guess he wasn't interested. The third apple that I picked up was also from a guy in Indiana, a different guy, and uh, framed and nicely displayed. And uh, this one we sold a couple years ago to a collector in Europe, and uh, rumor has it that this one just uh, set another world's record for prices. So uh, the Apple one has certainly gone up in value over the years. The only thing I kept from that original second Apple one was the pink version of the invoice. I'm did, glad I did keep one piece of it. I guess someday I'll have to frame that and uh, put it in, uh, put it up to, to remind me of my encounters with Steve Jobs and different apples over the years. If you want to take a look at my website, I have about probably 40 different apples in my collection. I got lots of Apple II's and III's and Lisa's and things like that. Uh, but it's been fun. I mean, I've had three Apple ones over the years. I wished I had one back, but I don't. Uh, but I sure have a lot of memories from them. So. That's a little bit about my encounters with apples, and uh, check out my other videos for, for other types of micros and, and uh, memorabilia that I have. Thanks.